the Tour de France is a centrepiece to the cycling season and the race that every rider wants to do. After starting in 1903, as a result of Lauto Velo newspaper's desire to increase sales, it's turned into one of the biggest sporting events in the world. The 2017 race will be the 104th edition, after pausing for both World War I and II. If you've never watched Tour de France before, or you'd like a refresher course, don't worry. Here's Cycling News' beginner's guide to the Tour de France. This year the race will return to Germany for the first time since the fall of the Berlin Wall. The opening stages of the race, or the Grand Depart, will take place in Dusseldorf, with a longer than usual 14 km time trial starting it all off, giving somebody like Tony Martin a chance to take the yellow leader's jersey. The race will then move through Belgium before heading into France for stage 3. Moving down the east of the country, there will be several opportunities for the sprinters, but there are some tough days too, with the Planche de Pelfi testing the overall contenders on stage 5. There will be two more summit finishes on stage 13 and 18, with the Perigode and the Col de Isoire. For the first time, the race will visit all five of France's mountain regions, the Vosges, the Jura, the Pyrenees, the Massif Central and the Alps in that order. The Isoar on stage 18 will be the final major mountain test, with a hilly effort the following day and a 22.5 km time trial, the final chance to make up places in the overall classification, before the traditional sprint finish into Paris. At 3,540 km, it's the longest race since 2014. The yellow jersey, or the maillot jaune, is the most important at the Tour de France. It denotes the leader of the general classification. The jersey was introduced for the 1919 edition after race director Henri de Grange came up with the idea. The winner of the overall classification is the rider who finishes the route in the shortest amount of time. Riders can also earn bonus seconds in the overall classification by finishing in the top three places on each stage. Finishes can be chaotic, particularly on the fast sprint days, so riders are protected by a rule that says if they're involved or caught behind a crash in the final three kilometers, then they will be given the finish time of the group that they were in. If you're outside the final three kilometers and you crash, then it's a mad chase to get back to the group. Chris Froome is the defending champion and will be looking for his fourth overall victory. Froome has named Alberto Contador, Richie Porte and Roman Bardet as his main contenders, while Nero Quintana, who's also ridden the Giro d'Italia this season, also poses a threat. The white jersey is awarded to the winner of the Young Rider classification. It works the same way as the general classification, but is reserved for riders under the age of 26. Adam Yates finished fourth in last season's tour and claimed victory in the white jersey competition. It will be his brother Simon that will be going up for the jersey this year, along with riders such as Louis Menkes and Warren Barguil. The green jersey is given to the winner of the points competition. The green jersey is much younger than its yellow counterpart, coming into existence at the 1953 race to give riders an opportunity to win something after Fausto Coppi tranced the field by almost half an hour the year before. Riders can earn points at intermediate sprints and at the finish line of each stage. More points are available at the finish line, so doing well in a stage will get you more than attacking and taking points at the intermediate sprints. In recent years, the point system was rejigged to give more weight to the flatter stages meaning that it's a sprinter who's most likely to win. Eric Zabel currently holds the record for the number of jerseys won with six, but Peter Sagan, who's won the last five years, is looking to equal that record. The polka dot jersey, or the Mayo Poir, is for the king of the mountains. It works in a similar fashion to the points classification, but the points are earned at the top of each classified climb. Climbs are classified from 4th as the lowest, right up to the highest, or category, or out of category. More points are available on the tougher climbs. When the stage ends with the summit finish, there are double points given, ensuring a tidy haul for a stage winner. General classification riders will naturally find themselves near the top of these standings due to the nature of racing. Chris Froome won in 2015, on the way to overall victory. But the winner can also be a rider willing to go on the attack over multiple days, such as Rafa Micah in 2016. 
there are several other competitions that offer prizes, but no jersey. The team classification takes into account the times of the top three riders in each team, and the winning outfit will be the one with the lowest accumulative time. The leaders of the classification will wear yellow numbers on their back and a yellow helmet. There's also a competition for the most aggressive rider. This is a subjective award rather than one judged on time or points. A rider is selected by a jury every day, and a winner will make a trip to the podium and wear red numbers on his back the day after. There's also an overall winner of the competition at the end of the race. Peter Sagan was awarded it in 2016.